Energy crops are low-cost and low-maintenance crops grown solely for energy production not for food. The crops are processed into solid, liquid or gaseous fuels, such as pellets, bioethanol or biogas. The fuels are burned to generate power or heat. The plants are generally categorized as woody or herbaceous. Woody plants include willow and poplar, herbaceous plants include Miscanthus ex giganteus and Penicetum purpurum both known as elephant grass. Herbaceous crops, while physically smaller than trees, store roughly twice the amount of CO2 in the form of carbon below ground, compared to woody crops, through biotechnological procedures such as genetic modification plants can be manipulated to create higher yields. Relatively high yields can also be realized with existing cultivars. However, some additional advantages such as reduced associated costs i.e. costs during the manufacturing process and less water use can only be accomplished by using genetically modified crops. <laughs> CO2 neutrality The amount of carbon sequestrated and the amount of GHG greenhouse gases emitted will determine if the total GHG life cycle cost of a bioenergy project is positive, neutral or negative. Specifically, a GHG carbon negative life cycle is possible if the total below ground carbon accumulation more than compensates for the above ground total life cycle GHG emissions. Whitaker et al. estimates that for Miscanthus ex giganteus, carbon neutrality and even negativity is within reach. Basically, the yield and related carbon sequestration is so high that it more than compensates for both farm operations emissions, fuel conversion emissions and transport emissions. The graphic on the right displays two CO2 negative Miscanthus ex giganteus production pathways, represented in gram CO2 equivalents per megajoule. The yellow diamonds represent mean values. One should note that successful sequestration is dependent on planting sites, as the best soils for sequestration are those that are currently low in carbon. The varied results displayed in the graph highlights this fact. Milner et al. argues that for the UK, successful sequestration is expected for arable land over most of England and Wales, with unsuccessful sequestration expected in parts of Scotland, due to already carbon-rich soils existing woodland. Also, for Scotland, the relatively lower yields in this colder climate makes CO2 negativity harder to achieve. Soils already rich in carbon includes peatland and mature forest. Grassland can also be carbon rich, however Milner et al. further argues that the most successful carbon sequestration in the UK takes place below improved grasslands. The bottom graphic displays the estimated yield necessary to achieve CO2 negativity for different levels of existing soil carbon saturation. The perennial rather than annual nature of Miscanthus crops implies that the significant below ground carbon accumulation each year is allowed to continue undisturbed. No annual ploughing or digging means no increased carbon oxidation and no stimulation of the microbe populations in the soil, and therefore no accelerated carbon to CO2 conversion happening in the soil every spring. Topic Types Topic Solid Biomass Solid biomass, often pelletized, is used for combustion in thermal power stations, either alone or co fired with other fuels. Alternatively it may be used for heat or combined heat and power production. In short rotation coppice agriculture, fast-growing tree species like willow and poplar are grown and harvested in short cycles of three to five years. These trees grow best in wet soil conditions. 
An influence on local water conditions cannot be excluded. Establishment close to vulnerable wetlands should be avoided. Topic: <laughs> Gas biomass, methane. Whole crops such as maize, Sudan grass, millet, white sweet clover, and many others can be made into silage and then converted into biogas. Anaerobic digesters or biogas plants can be directly supplemented with energy crops once they have been ensiled into silage. The fastest growing sector of German biofarming has been in the area of renewable energy crops. On nearly 500,000 hectares, 1,200,000 acres of land, 2006. Energy crops can also be grown to boost gas yields where feedstocks have a low energy content, such as manures and spoiled grain. It is estimated that the energy yield presently of bioenergy crops converted via silage to methane is about 2 gigawatt hours per square kilometer, 1.8 times 1010 BTU per square mile annually. Small mixed cropping enterprises with animals can use a portion of their acreage to grow and convert energy crops and sustain the entire farm's energy requirements with about one fifth of the acreage. In Europe and especially Germany, however, this rapid growth has occurred only with substantial government support, as in the German bonus system for renewable energy. Similar developments of integrating crop farming and bioenergy production via silage methane have been almost entirely overlooked in N America, where political and structural issues and a huge continued push to centralize energy production has overshadowed positive developments. Topic: Liquid biomass. Topic: Biodiesel. European production of biodiesel from energy crops has grown steadily in the last decade, principally focused on rapeseed used for oil and energy. Production of oil, biodiesel from rape covers more than 12,000 square kilometers in Germany alone, and has doubled in the past 15 years. Typical yield of oil as pure biodiesel may be as 100,000 L per square kilometer, 68,000 US gallon per square mile, 57,000 imp gallon per square mile or more, making biodiesel crops economically attractive, provided sustainable crop rotations exist that are nutrient balanced and preventative of the spread of disease such as clubroot. Biodiesel yield of soybeans is significantly lower than that of rape. Topic: <inaudible> Bioethanol. Energy crops for biobotanol are grasses. Two leading non-food crops for the production of cellulosic bioethanol are switchgrass and giant miscanthus. There has been a preoccupation with cellulosic bioethanol in America as the agricultural structure supporting biomethane is absent in many regions, with no credits or bonus system in place. Consequently, a lot of private money and investor hopes are being pinned on marketable and patentable innovations in enzyme hydrolysis and the like. Bioethanol also refers to the technology of using principally corn maize seed to make ethanol directly through fermentation, a process that under certain field and process conditions can consume as much energy as is the energy value of the ethanol it produces, therefore being non-sustainable. New developments in converting grain stillage referred to as distiller's grain stillage or DGS into biogas energy looks promising as a means to improve the poor energy ratio of this type of bioethanol process. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Energy crop use in various countries. In Sweden, willow and hemp are often used. In Finland, reed canary grass is a popular energy crop.
Topic: <laughs> Energy crop use in thermal power stations. Several methods exist to reduce pollution and reduce or eliminate carbon emissions of fossil fuel power plants. A frequently used and cost-efficient method is to convert a plant to run on a different fuel such as energy crops, biomass. In some instances, torrefaction of biomass may benefit the power plant if energy crops, biomass is the material the converted fossil fuel power plant will be using. Also, when using energy crops as the fuel, and if implementing bioca production, the thermal power plant can even become carbon negative rather than just carbon neutral. Improving the energy efficiency of a coal-fired power plant can also reduce emissions. <laughs> See also